Hey, hey, our glass podcast. The time is now. The time now or never, baby. What you waiting on? The time is now. What you waiting on? She got a body like an hourglass podcast. Hello, hello, hello. This is your host for the Hourglass Podcast, B Low, and I got the crew with me. Rated R. Rated R in the building. All right, I got Dub Boo. Dub Boo in the house. That's Dub what's Boo. up. That's what's up. We back at it again. Before we get started now, I got to go special shout out to Rated R. It's his birthday for the day, boy. Already know. Clap it on up. Clap it on up. Clap it on up. Clap it on up for Rated R. B Day. B Day. B Day. There we go, there we go. I got me working on my beat day. <laughs> on your beat day. Hell, y'all got me working on my beat day. On his beat yeah. day, man. Oh, man. But we got, hey, we got the main attraction over here, though. We got a special guest right here, though. We got an artist and a cannabis entrepreneur, Mr. Ideal over here. Ideal, give, right. it up, give, give it up, give it up, baby. Give it up, give it up. <laughs> oh, shit. You heal, you heal right okay. there, man. What's going on, yeah. idea, man? You heal. Like like, you in the building, baby. I like What's that little up? drop right there, man. That was I nice. You. you know we got you on here. We got you on here. Oh yeah. Yeah, we got you on here. We got you up on here. Yeah, yeah. You gotta keep it cracking. You gotta keep it cracking. Even when it's cracked. If they don't know, they gon' know. Yeah, we they go. don't Let's know, go. they gonna we know. We trucking, we trucking with this I appreciate one. y'all yeah. having me, man. Especially oh, yeah. on your birthday, bro. Oh, you know man. what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 Kansas, bro. Kansas, we coming through. Okay, okay. all right, man. All right, man. Yeah. All right, yeah. man. Yeah. All right, yeah. man. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. You might have to find you okay. some okay. Yeah. That's, that's why y'all put me over here, huh? I didn't even know I was a cancer until some bitch told me they're like, yo, you need to check out horoscopes and shit. You a cancer. Oh, shit, I'm with it. Hey, she had some good stuff to say about you. Yes, me. That's me. That's cancer. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, shit. You want me to be a cancer? I'm in. Let's go. Like, for real. For real, for there real. Is. Okay, okay, now nah, deal, man. But I gotta say, man, definitely thank you for coming. Like the yes, grace yes. hourglass man. podcast. Yes, yes. My pleasure, the man. time My pleasure. is now. Yes, sir. No definitely, way, bro, bro. But where you? But like, first question though, where you from, my deal, man? Uh, man, I was born in Toledo. I moved to Gary when I was nine with my pops. Uh, but I grew up in Northwest Indiana. Two one Gary, Indiana. Yeah, yeah, Gary, Indiana. Gary, Indiana. Indiana. Indiana okay, man, Michigan okay. City, Indiana. Um, now I split my time between Chicago and Michigan. Like, uh, I, I moved to Pilsen like a year ago, but I've been in Chicago for like since I was a kid, man. And, like stealing cars and coming up here and just wilding the fuck out when I was like 13 or 14. Not, not, right. not GTA, man. Nothing like that. Not, not GTA. Wilding out some real shit. Yeah, some real shit. Yeah. Not the game. Not, e- not the game. Nasty on LSD. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> no, that's right. Okay. That's what's up. That's what's okay, up. that's what's up. So, so, idea. Where did the name come from? Uh, so, man, my real name is Justin Deal, you know? Okay. And also, like, uh, you know, I've, I've, Deal. I've been dealing J-Deal. drugs since I was, like, 12 years old, man, for real, on some real shit. Like, like, <laughs> oh, yes, wow. A- a- motherfuckers hey. know, you know what yeah, I mean? Exactly. <laughs> like, hey, hey, shit. Nah, the plug. stop. On the blocks. Slinging uh, rocks. Nah, yeah. stop. <laughs> Straight up, bro. Bend the plug in this motherfucker. Okay, okay. Yeah. Devin the plug for real, though. We're going to get to that, too, later. Yeah, he the plug yeah, for real. You. He ain't just talking like that. He the plug not, for real. I'm not. Ask the streets, you know? So what a love for hip-hop star. Man, I, so really when I was like, when I was eight years old, man, before I, uh, you know, I didn't even really listen to music at eight. I didn't know, you know, I was just a badass kid, you know, just like outside playing little sports and shit. Uh, my cousin in Cincinnati gave me all eyes on me, like, like no bullshit, like two weeks after Tupac died. And I just fell in love with it. And then I found out Pac died. And I was like, I missed this by like, you know what I mean? It was like, it was like December. He died in like December, you know what I'm saying? Oh, in 96. Man. And uh, I just, I, I was writing poetry, you know what I mean? Since I was like 10, something like that, you know what I mean? What's up. And uh, that also really came from, uh, you know, like once, uh, once I really got into pocket that young, I went and got uh, The Rose That Grew From Concrete, like that book, you know what I mean? And that like, it yeah. really put me on, I started writing poetry. And then when I was like 12, I really started rapping. But back then I was listening to nothing but just, you know, like, I had every No Limit album. We used to just steal all the No Limit oh, albums. Yeah. That was a lot I'm of pretty albums. sure we put Sam Goody out of business, man. That we would just take the whole, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, that, was, that was a lot of albums. It was. Albums. It was like 30 a month, right? Yeah. <laughs> but no, man, I was just like 3-6 and No Limit. And then when I like, you know, when I turned like 16, 17, when I really found like Illmatic and, uh, I mean, beyond that, it was written, like changed my whole life, you know? Um, and then just, you know, most Step and Quality, like really like, Lyricist Lounge, I remember on MTV, oh, yeah. and I was like, man, this is like, oh, yeah. I really can do this. And it's really what I was feeling. And so when I was 18, so I really started taking it seriously, you know what I mean? Um, and then I joined my band when I was 20, my band Midwest Height. 
And uh, okay. that became a South whole nother West thing. Hype, man. So, yeah, yeah, oh, man. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. We actually playing uh, Chop Shop on August 20th, man. So come through. We're going to headline that shit. Oh, yeah, yeah definitely. August 20th, Chop Shop. Chop Shop. Chop Shop. I'm going to put that down on the schedule. Put it down on the schedule, K-Money. Chop Shop. K-Money, Chop Shop. There we go. We're going to get there. Some cars, shop. So I got to kind of say, like, you spoke about, like, the South and the Midwest, stuff like that. Now, who kind of, like, really aspired you? Like, you know, like, really, like, one rapper, you look at, like, man, a specific group or, like. When I was a kid, Nas, man. Like, when I found Illmatic, I was like, oh, like like the the hard consonant rhyme, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Just like in depth storytelling and shit. Um, and also, you know, that led to like Outcast. Like, did, did y'all ever get like the Columbia CD like CDs for you know? Oh yeah, yeah. twenty dollars in the back. I put one of those in every yeah. single member of my family's name. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And so like those were like a you know manna from heaven. It'd be like ten albums come through that I've just been like waiting on. And you know that's where I found out about everything. And like I was getting some shit right as it came out. Like you know. Uh, DM, all DM, it was dark and hell is hot. All that shit was like right when it came DM, out. Right, 98, right, 99, right, right, but like right. I was going back and finding like reasonable doubt. It, uh, it was written. Oh, you, start, you start going back into the history. Yeah, 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 yeah. you know. But then yeah. I got like Outkast's whole first three albums, man. You know what I'm saying? That shit just like put me on another level of like uh, just wordplay, man. Like my, I, I consider myself a poet and a lyricist, and like just the way word, you know, like if, even if I wanted to stop rapping and stop rhyming and shit, I would still wake up with just like still words. Right. Like still uh, right. I hear a word and that shit, I'm just like, oh, well that just goes like this, you know, and it, it just instantly happens for me. So that's like my favorite shit, you know, anything that's like, obviously like Eminem, but like I, Everybody always makes like the white rapper comparison, but like oh, yeah. the dude is the fucking illness, man. I get, I like, more of like a Cypress <laughs> Hill vibe from you. I get the Cypress Hill vibe. Cyp- yeah, I was on Not, stage with Cypress Hill at summer camp a couple years ago, wilding out, like, do the sit dog dance. Oh, I was for a while. Did y'all, did y'all crowd surf? Did y'all do it? Up to the monster. I, I thought, it, I thought about it, bro, but it wasn't my show. I was playing at summer camp with uh, a couple of other dudes that I fuck with, and like I was just, just on the stage mic. for just their shit. The I was like, yeah, I'm like, I don't know if I should be stage diving at their shit. Like, who the fuck is this? <laughs> but no, no, man, I, I fuck with Cypress Hill real hard for sure. That's what's up, Cypress Hill. Yeah, man. So, like, like you said, people always try to compare the two, you know. But I mean, dope. I mean, you know what's dope and what's dope. You know I'm what not saying? bad at it. You know what I mean? I'm like, exactly. Shit. You know what's dope. Put me in I that mean, class. I don't. I really don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? But it, it to me, Eminem did. He you know he did like the battle rapper shit, the the underground shit, the yeah. fucking rock star shit, the almost die shit. You know, yeah, what I mean? like yeah. everything. So exactly. Put me in that category. I appreciate it. Like you know, that's that's what I'm aiming for. Whether white or black, whatever. You know what I mean? Like in terms of hip hop, the canon. That's what I'm aiming for. Yeah, I don't think it's no color, and you know, right? right. I, I don't think it's no color. I mean, you good, you good. Yeah, you good, you good. That's, That's just point blank. We all okay. inclusive here on the hourglass now. All yeah. inclusive. Oh, Take money. We all inclusive now. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah. yeah y'all, yeah. y'all starting to sprinkle around here now a little more. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, question, like, what makes your style and your lyrics different than what the artists are out today? Oh, man, I'm, I'm nothing like shit on the radio today, man. And not that I don't fuck with it, you know what I mean? But it's just like, I come from like... It's not boom bad, but my, I come from, like, fucking heavy lyricism, dope beats, like, you know what I mean? The drums, first off, need to fucking be banging, and then, like... Uh, Hip-hop. My Meaning, shit, meaningful rap. <laughs> I like, so, like, the way... Me and my producer, Pooty, man, he's, like, uh, the dude who taught me how to grow weed, the dude that I grow weed with, that I'm about to open a business with, but also he's my producer, my... He's the only dude that I, like, bounce ideas off of anything, you know what I mean? Like, I write all my own shit, but he'll be like, this phrase he does, like... You need. You should change this past tense to a present. You know, he'll be like that right. shit doesn't hit the right. listener right, and so he's the only dude I bounce shit off of like that. Okay. And um, like me and him, man, like uh, all his beats are like sample based. He finds like he's always searching for obscure samples and shit. And then from there, he'll be like he'll play it for me, and I'll show interest, and he'll be like, oh, bet, and he'll build on the beat to it. And uh, we, you know, I mean, it's it's very much from there. We like it is super dense hip hop shit, but. I'm a musician yeah. and I'm a way shittier musician than all my friends but all my friends are amazing musicians and so like we'll have the drums and I'll have a little flow going and we'll come and have my bass player from Midwest Sight lay down a bass line or a saxophone player from Midwest Sight lay down a sax line and we build it instrumentally from there um, for example this song Unconventional featuring Mick Jenkins that's got a uh, Tony Austin and Miles Morris from Kamazi Washington's band on it, and I did a bunch of shit with Kamazi Washington's band. I was trying to get Kamazi on it. Definitely, but, but how was the record with Mick, Mick Jenkins though, man? You're on the track, amazing, bro. man. Amazing, he, you know, yeah. Mick blessed me with the fucking dopest 16, man. Like, Definitely, uh, shot time right there. Give it yo, out, yo, shot time. Right shout there, to Mick, man. Shout, shout to Mick, to, fucking shout slime. out to Mick. Those shout out to all of them. Man. Shout out to all of them. Definitely, definitely. And I gotta say, like. On your song, it's the natural man, like a reggae song you got. Yeah. And I like the, I'm going to quote like a little lyric from that. Yeah. It said, a natural man fighting against the laws in the captured land. More of us and less of them. 
yeah, yeah. Like that hook, like that, that, that really done. So he said all inclusive right there. Be like, low, be low. So you, got, you got to work on your flow, man. Yeah, yeah. That's, you got to work. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's how it goes. I'm pretty sure that's not how it goes. I'm pretty sure that's not how it goes. I'm pretty sure that's not how it goes. I'm not rapping about it. Man, look at this. Pass that on over. Pass that on over. Pass the mic. It was scholarly, bro. That was scholarly. I agree. I get out there with people out there. The time is now. I appreciate it, But definitely, like you just said, like we all inclusive right there on that line. Like, so that's my dude. That's my dude, Roddy K. Um, he's from a band called Love Militia, uh, in in Florida and in Atlanta. Um, and he came through. My producer Pootie met him in Atlanta, or actually met him in Miami. Um, and he sent him the beat And like he had already Played me the beat And I was like Yo I'm gonna murder this shit And Roddy sent back some shit And he just did like A bunch of different You know he was like Take anything you want He did like a bunch of Different four to eight bar things And I was like yo Natural man fight. And I was like That's the hook right there bro That shit fire and It's from, fire From it there is. my verses it Like is. wrote themselves You know what I mean That shit just like Laid itself out And yeah it became You know that's the first Single off the record We shot the video All ourselves So I fucking With my uh, drummer From Midwest site Max Kepler We produced it You know came up With the whole idea for it executed it like that's like it's like a fucking movie man it's a, you know I've never done any videographer shit or anything like that so I'm got real proud of that got some black lives shit. matter and everything oh like yeah yeah no, it's, it's dude, in the video yeah. me and my producer yeah. Pooty like when the fucking riots went down to Chicago we were like we were half of that footage is us like flipping over police cars and shit man we were up here fucking wilding out man like fuck being on Twitter and just like talking about shit like we were up here fucking making some shit happen I was yeah. there when the bridges got raised and motherfuckers was fighting you know what I mean like with the cops with the fucking all the, the riot style fucking pens you know what I'm saying like right, right, right. fuck that shit man like fucking I'm proud of Chicago I'm proud of Chicago for this man. summer for what it That's did in up. the past three, four years. Shot Shot down, baby. Shot Shot down, down, baby. Give it up for Shot Town, baby. You're absolutely right. Definitely. Absolutely right. And I knew when I when I first walked up to you earlier, as a real hip hop. No, you, and I, you, I, I appreciate I, that, man. That's I mean, the real shit. You know, I used to, you know, do a little stage thing, you know, but that's where I was. That kind of that kind of space is where I was at. You know, real recognize real, man. You know exactly, I mean? and that's all you really got to say. I mean, you can rec- you can recognize it from the top. You know, I'm like, you know, what I'm saying it make you want to bop your head again, and 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 you know. My, yeah. my goal, man, is yeah. for like, you know, it, with me and with my band, too, my band's like way more like reggae, funk, jazz, but all through like the scope of like hip hop and rock and roll pretty much. But right. my whole goal is that like. When I play the song, wherever you're at, that shit makes you dance and bob your head and have a good time. And then when you when you leave, you know what I mean? It's the the song is, has so much substance and resonance that it fucking like sticks it with sticks you. With and you. then and yeah. then when you're by yourself, just chilling, it's in your head and you think about it. And you're like, oh shit, dude yeah. was dude was fucking really saying something here. Exactly. You know? And that's that's the end goal of all my shit. You know what I mean? That's that's the whole trifecta. Facts. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> when you get to the man. point where you be like, you get home like, oh, he said. Did you hear what he said? My did you, favorite you shit, man. It, did you? Did you, you hit it? Yeah, see. When, when somebody's like, motherfucker, that, especially if I look up to you, but even if I don't, if I don't even know you, you know what I'm saying? But I just like, we bop on a level or whatever, motherfuckers are like, oh, you really be rapping. I'm like, thank you, man. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, you know, that's exactly. the best compliment when, I can ever get. When they see you, they be real. like, rapper. Yeah, motherfucker yeah. be rapping. Like, yeah, <laughs> exactly. There and it I is. appreciate <laughs> that so much, man. It really means a lot to me. Like, I, I, you know, look up to that, like, level of respect, and, like, that matters to me. Like, Rapping really matters to me, man. Lyricism and substance and, and overall just like authenticity, you know what I mean? Like whether whatever it is that you're doing, like meeting it. Like meeting it. Right. <laughs> exactly. I mean? like, exactly. That's exactly. that's the deepest shit for me. So I appreciate y'all. Like I said, man, having me here and you, rocking man. with me, man. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, definitely, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the key thing though. You know, we try to, you know what I'm saying, bring bring people, give them a platform, say what you're gonna say. Cause we gonna all rise, you know. That's the key. The time is now. The time is now, yeah. You yeah. know. So, question: um, uh, Rappers in the industry, what artists would you would like to collab with? So right now, I'm working on it, man. Like, uh, I've been selling like fucking. So the the last time I saw my new DJ Indiana Jones before he died in Indy, man, who was like a he's like a hip hop icon. Indiana in Indy. Jones, and he passed yeah, in Indy. Yeah, and fucking, uh, I was down there. He hooked us up with uh, with Griselda, man, with Benny the Butcher and everybody in Conway. Oh, okay. So I've been selling them herb through, you know, through their management shit for a minute. But I'm trying to link right. with Benny and Freddie Gibbs real hard, man. Okay. Like, uh, oh, Freddie yeah, Gibbs, yeah, yeah. Gibbs yeah. Yeah. We're the only motherfuckers from Gary, man. Us and Michael Jackson. You know what I mean? There ain't exactly. nobody else. Straight exactly. up. So it's Skrilla. Like, and, and we also got real Skrilla. Give us out. We had him on that. Also, on the, yeah. I got a shot of my dude Rick Jilla. He's from Hammond, but he's on my record as well. But okay, Rick Jilla, okay. the Swisher okay. Killer, man, that's my dude. Okay. There it is. Shout out. Shout out. There ain't nobody. Also, oh, right there, Gary Indiana, yeah, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout yeah, out. Two one nine. Two one nine. You definitely gonna get your collab, man. You, you definitely. I'm working artist. on it, man. It seems wanna... like it makes too much sense already. You man, know? you yeah. definitely artists. Some people uh, I can see they want to get with though. 
I, you know, I don't, I don't really push like the hustler fucking like side of shit, but like, you know, I've been, I've been moving more weight on multiple levels across multiple <laughs> scales. And you both see rappers out here. Y'all want to talk about some real shit? I've been doing this shit for a long time. Bars, man. Like, yeah, that's the street, Bars, man. Baby. Facts. Bars. Yeah, Something facts for you like to that. think about. Now we got a, now I got a question for you about yeah. your upcoming album, Scatterbrain, yeah. right? Yes, yeah, sir. Scatterbrain. Now, now, yeah. now, what was the like? You know, the I meaning had a name, Scatterbrain, for you, like. Well, you, how you came up with that, bro? That's that's really me, man. Like, uh, I'm I'm all over the place, man. Like my shit, my mind works in like a rolodex, but like that rolodex, as soon as it ends, it goes right back to the, you know. what I mean, it's like uh, I'm super scatterbrained, man. I like I'll set my phone down while I'm looking for my keys, find my keys, fucking need so, my phone. So what the album gonna have some R and B's and rocks and rap, rip, no, mix it no, all no, up. It's, it's, it's all hip hop. It's, it's all hip hop. Yeah. Yeah. So I've always been about um, you know, what I mean, like uh, album titles, like yeah, you know, what I mean, like Ready to Die, Life After Death, you mm. know, like uh, just like all like uh, I'm about a theme and overarching theme and shit like or like any you know whatever it is but so my shit uh i'm just all like i decided to be like two word everything so my first ep was wildlife and this is scatterbrain i might make the next one like speakeasy or something but like it i'm all about the two word things and then like uh i'm also like the album art my my girl who like my queen uh, Amanda Allenies, uh, Restitch Reality oh, Art. Shout out okay, yeah. to the yeah. queen, yeah. baby. Yeah. She does, like, she's, my, she's my artwork director and everything. She does like all the collage shit. She gets like more love than I do on the artwork, on the music. She's like, you know, everybody's always like, who the fuck is this? But oh, yeah. she real mad I ain't bring her up here. She's like, you went to the strip club and ain't bring me? Oh, <laughs> it's yeah, a yeah. gentleman's club, so, a gentleman's it's club. There's enough yeah. women's in here. You should have told me. But it's just enough with, with her in. artwork and shit, you know, it's like, it, it's all the same like type of idea. Like I'm, I'm all about like themes that like just coincide across the board, you know what I mean? Across the spectrum I swear it's like even if it's different you still know it's me you know it's coming from me um, and yeah man that, that's where the title came from but yeah as far as the music no it's straight like sample bass dope ass hip hop live bass lines live scratches shout out to my dude L, uh, LD from Sublime with Rome he did all the mixing and mastering, mastering and scratches on my record and uh, yeah man there's lots of lots of fucking uh, musicians that I never thought I'd be able to work with like uh, like I said a bunch of Herbie that's Hancock and Kamazi yeah. Washington's band um, Umphreys McGee uh, they're just a bunch of my friends who are also amazing musicians, even though they're not on that level of fame yet. They're, they're about to be, you know? So, okay. I mean, so that's dope. So, Scatterbrain. Now, when I hear words, sometimes they are, they're stories. Yeah. And sometimes they're just words that can go with words. Yeah. Scatterbrain is kind of like almost a storyline. Is that how you thought of it, like, like as a storyline? Because everybody has, you know... It's to everybody, and that kind of. So you gotta. And I, I feel like as artists, you know, what I'm saying it's a, it's about like uh, you know, there's contrast and everything. You know what I mean? Like, Tupac can put out like hit him up, and then put out like dear mama. You know what I mean? It's, right. it's like a real it's, artist. Exactly. That's like the the three dimensionality of it. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, man, it's just like the the album is. I try to you know like be real personal and some shit, but like the title track Scatterbrain is just a straight banger. It's just like front to back. You know, like 92 beats a minute, straight banger. So it's like uh, the just as soon as I thought of it, it's like. A lot of times with album titles, I say them out loud, or somebody says it, and I just go, oh, shit, that's oh, the album that's title, it, right? That's like, it, that's it right there. You know what I mean? And I'm like, that's it. And we all just agree, you know, but, like, uh, wow. I, I thought of that with my, my producer, Pooney. We were just smoking, you know what I mean? And, like, I was like, man, I'm like, I'm so scatterbrained today. And I was like, scatterbrained, you know? I was like, that's the, that's and that's the fucking dope. record. And that's dope. That's it. So that's it, dope. Like, it just came to me, it's but catchy. yeah. It's catchy. Yeah, that's and it dope. Just, yeah, it made sense, man. I, like, I, I couldn't describe a better word to... to you know, I mean, describe who I am and like how I go about it as a, as an artist and just my everyday life. Like I said, I I grow weed legally in Michigan. I'm getting ready to open up a dispensary and all that shit up there. But I've been doing that for so long, even before it was legal in Indiana. And I I make music with my band and also as myself. And so I'm constantly and I also have to sell the weed that I grow. So like I'm constantly moving that in a circle. You know, so like as soon as I put down one thing, I'm picking up the next, and it's it's. It very is scatterbrained. It's scatterbrained. All my right. shit's in like an elliptical that right. overlaps, you know? <laughs> all over the place, all over the place. Well, at least you got something to, to calm it down once, you, once you're done with the scatter, you know? <laughs> Sit back and take a puff a couple of times yeah, and you're good. You right good. before this, we did. It was <laughs> nice, man. <laughs> so on your album, how many tracks do you have and what you looking to accomplish? Um, there's 10 tracks on the record. Um, I, like I said, Natural Man was the first single uh, with my dude Roddy from Love Militia. Uh, we did the video for that. The second single I just put out was Unconventional with Mick. Um, he just came through and fucking laced it, man. Like, uh, linked up with him, and, 
and brought him some really nice herb. And he like, uh, if the, <laughs> actually, I, ganja, I, I linked up with this dude Slime, his DJ Slime, uh, through my guy AJ, who's like a, a videographer, movie set designer. And um, he took me to Slime's broke ass Christmas party, and I gave him some weed. And he was like, "Yo, fucking," he was like, "Can you bring us?" Uh, it was called Kosher Tangy, which is like a really specific strain. And I was like, "Yo." I'm the only person who has my specific strain of kosher tangy in the world. Like we got it from the seed company before they even released it, and then it never got released. So I'm like, and then, so I met him at the House of Blues with uh when they was opening it up for Earth Gang, and uh, brought him in. So we just hit it off from there. Like the next morning, Mick was like, "Yo, I got you whatever you need." And uh, the 16 that he sent me is just stupid, man. I was like, "Holy shit!" Like it made me be like, "Oh man." I'm- I almost up. have to come with another verse, and yeah, I, right. I did. But I already had that verse written, but I was like, "Shit!" And I might have to come with a third verse. He came so hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so how did you really like get into the cannabis industry like that? You know. Oh man, it was. So my my producer Pooty, uh, when I was eighteen, we were in a hip hop group called. When I was like sixteen, we were in a hip hop group called Complex Simplicity. Um, and I was like making little beats by myself and shit. And he came by one day and had never made a beat before, and just like fuck with my little beat, and instantly, and I was like. You should be my producer, bro. I was like, you do this way better than I do. Oh, um, And so from there, like, uh, he started making beats. And my first full-length solo record, he got robbed, man. Like, uh, somebody kicked his door in, tied him up and shit. Oh, and no, fucking, wow. Yeah, oh, like, no. fucking, like, you know what I mean? It, like, he didn't even oh, have Antoine nothing. Walker. Right? He, didn't, he didn't even have nothing in this motherfucker. He was like, oh, take wow. whatever. And it, so they just took all our musical equipment. Oh, oh, and wow. so I had all my first record on it and everything. And from there... Uh, one of our guys in Colorado hit him up and was like, yo, come out here and fucking learn to grow the best weed in the world and you can sleep on my couches. So he did that and then he moved back and he was like, let's go to Michigan, which, you know, in Gary, we're like 20 minutes from Michigan. I'm like, we've been getting arrested here for years, you know what I'm saying, for like small bags of weed. He was like, let's go to Michigan, man. So now it's like, legal now. Yeah, you know what I mean? We moved up there and like Michigan fucking shit, man. They want to give us like the key to the city. You know what I mean? They're like, we're like helping write laws with the fucking governor and shit. You know what I mean? So That's what's up. That's as soon as, you know, I, I started doing that when I was like 20 and we weren't at that level yet. Um, but, you know, doing it 10 years now, like, uh, I won't say it's the best weed in the world, but we grow some of the best weed in the world. You know, like straight up Best urban Michigan shit. Oh, that's what's oh, up. Wow. We, we gotta go up there and get a little, little taste. I brought something y'all like some, that. man. Uh-oh. I brought y'all some. Uh oh, uh oh. Uh oh, camera. K money. Get some contact. You getting contact yeah. today, K money. <laughs> you make sure you do your job, then you go smoke the stuff first. <laughs> he can do the camera, gonna be a little wobbly, yeah. man. Right. <laughs> J Money got it. He got it. He got it. Man. That's so, what's up. So, uh, is it a warehouse? You all deal no, with No, so uh, uh, right now I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a caregiver, right? So it's like I grow herb for 12 other, or excuse me, I grow 12 plants for six other people, including myself. So uh, you can have 12 plants just by yourself, being over 21. And so I can grow 72 plants total legally. And uh, it's like a caregiver to patient to doctor relationship. So it's like whatever I agree on with said patient is what I give them. But we're getting ready to open a micro grow, which will be the second in all of Michigan right now, which is 150 plants compared to like a thousand or two thousand. But it's a, uh, it's like, we're not Anheuser Busch, we're like uh, three Floyds, you know what I'm saying? So it's like it's completely based around like the best weed in the world. Like no, we can't, we don't have the, we have the license, but we don't have the insurance. You gotta have like a bomb proof building to mm-hmm. do wax and shit. So everything will be based around just like amazing weed, you know what I mean? It'll be more like a kind of like a buyer's club like you'll have a you'll get a little you know saying a membership and you'll come through once a month and we'll spend like an hour with you like going over everything that we got and it, you know what i mean like developing like a routine for you or uh you know what i mean a prescription for you right. that'll change as you come along you know what I mean? all the right. crucial club right straight there. up like right. a, a buyer's club or a smoker's club there it is, <laughs> you know there, it is. there it is so it so you got different strands that you're working on oh yeah well so we don't we don't work on them we just grow them. like uh we, okay. we get like we're like a, we're like, you know what I'm saying, uh, like DJ Clue, you know what I'm saying? DJ them up, or like Khaled, right? He doesn't right. like necessarily make the beats, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He just has the best yeah. exclusive that nobody else Variety can get, features and shit. Exactly. So yeah. to, to like make your own strains, you got to have like a whole separate lab and all that shit. You can't let any yeah. of that shit, it'll cross pollinate and fuck up your whole grow, you know? Right. So we, we're just running shit right now that's like, uh, you know, other people can't get and, and doing it like better than most people can. Right, um, right. But it's called, it's called Lifted. Definitely. Has, has there been any like rappers or anything like that in contact with you? Like everybody see Soldier Boy just got his new strain yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. A couple people have been hitting us up. Uh, okay. Like Calvin Johnson from the Lions was oh, like yes. t- talking about it, but I think he went with actually one of my other dudes who's doing like a way bigger thing because we're not making strains. But uh, I'm, I'm getting ready to do a couple songs with October London, uh, the R&B singer who just signed a Snoop shit. Um, he just signed a Def Jam as well. 
Uh, and his single Fire is coming out in like two weeks, and he's doing a bunch of product placement with our jars and all that shit. But um, we won't be officially open as a micro dispensary until like we'll be up and running like the first of the year, but we won't be open until like March for like public consummation and shit. Okay, March 2022. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Right. So, yeah, it is. How, how much marijuana can an individual? get like a patient how uh, much can that patient be like oh, so you can, in michigan just being 21 you can have i believe uh two and a half ounces on you and you can have 10 ounces at your crib just being 21 you don't need a card for any of that shit um as a caregiver i can at any times have what's called a michigan pound it's like 15.5 ounces on me um and i can have up to two and a half at the crib um but it, yeah it's like the laws are kind of gray area, like they're they're yeah. changing them constantly, you know what I mean? But that's like as of right now, anybody over 21. And then if you have a card, um, it goes up a little bit more. In your card, you get like, it's not like Chicago. In Michigan, to get a medical marijuana card, you just you just have to say you're in pain. You know, you're like, I fucking hurt, and I smoke weed about it, and they're like with you, you know what I mean? It's not like Chicago, I think you actually have to have like a, you know, like yeah. cancer. Or something. Yeah. 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 Bring the paperwork yeah. and everything. Yeah, you know what I mean? Michigan's like, yeah. no, we believe you. Right. Yeah, we exactly. believe you. Yeah, like, we I, believe I get you. it. I get it. Now, how's that tax in Michigan now? Now, now the tax of Illinois is now. Oh, um, I... It, in Michigan, as far as a caregiver, you don't get taxed. It's about like, uh, it's really you're only growing the weed for your patients and for yourself or whatever. So you don't okay. you don't get taxed on that at all. But you're also not supposed to charge your patients an arm and a leg. You know what I mean? It's supposed okay. to be. But uh, like, like the regular reasonable. the regular consumers come in, do they get taxed? Yeah, so like the Illinois, it's a, they get taxed. It's, yeah. a, it's a ten percent tax. Um, it's not near. I think Illinois might be somewhere like thirty percent. But it's also about like uh, your individual town or township or county. They can be like. You, you can have like just a 10% tax from the state, but they can be like, no, fuck that, 40% tax, whatever. Right, Ours, luckily, right. is cool as fuck, man. I'm, I'm in Berrien County um, in Buchanan, and it's like my little town that like I split my time between Chicago and Michigan in. There's only like 2,000 people, and it will be the seventh dispensary. So it's like, it's the Mecca right now. Right, you know right, what I mean? Right. It's like, and it's right over the border, like uh, 10 minutes above South Bend. Okay. Like you, you can take the South Shore and just fall asleep on it, and they wake you up, and then you just go like five miles north, and then you can be in my shit. <laughs> right there. That's perfect. For that's, real, though. That's perfect. So I come come get some of that um that good. Yeah, yeah. man. Whenever. It's like, you know, 100% across the board legal. Like, you know, I don't even think you have to have an ID. Like, fucking, it's just anybody over 21. Oh, wow. What about the gummies? Everything, everything. Like, uh, like I said, at my dispensary, we won't necessarily be doing those right away because to, like... Uh, an actual dispensary, right? They're not growing shit. They're buying it and selling it, and they don't really produce anything. We have to, as a micro dispensary, we have 150 plants, and we have to grow and sell everything out of our building. So, like, if we run out of shit, we can't buy more shit, and if we, you know, can't sell it, we can't, you know, sell it to anybody else. But, like, that won't be a problem. But uh, we will be making gummies, and we'll be making, uh, like, rosins and shit, but we can't make any, we can't do any extracts that involve a gas because you have to have a bomb-proof building, which is, like, we have the insurance and everything, but the building itself is, like, millions of dollars. And, like, that's, it just doesn't make sense. So, you got a lot of level. investors with you, a lot of investors, like, No, nah, man, it's all us, man. Like, it's, uh, it's my dude, Poonie. And uh, so, like, two years ago, we did hemp, man. We did 50 acres of hemp by ourselves with five people. Like, a job that should have taken, like, uh, we, we never farmed before. We're not fucking farmers, but we did fucking, we thought we were hopping in on something new. And uh, we did like 50 acres of hemp, man, which is, you know, produces an insane amount of CBD and shit. Right, so like, right. We're finally about to get our money back from that. But um, no, it's, it's my dude, Pooty and his family. Um, and they, they all put it up themselves. We were going to do investors, but when COVID hit and everything, he just decided to do it himself. And I'm lucky enough to be able to get in on a small part of it. Um, but like I said, he's been my, you know, he's my big brother. I've been like his right hand man. He taught me how to do all this shit. So I'm just happy to be alone for the ride. Man, look, everybody, shout out to Pony, man. Yeah, yeah, shout out to Pony. Shout Pony. out to Dan Pony, man. He's been here from the beginning. You better than me. I, I don't know if I can trust somebody by the name Pony. <laughs> so and his, that right there. <laughs> his name's Mike Wapple, man. Like, uh, we worked in this car wash when I was a kid, man, in LaPorte, Indiana. Like, uh, I moved to Gary when I was young, and then my parents moved to LaPorte. And uh, I just kind of bounced around, man, like Northwest Michigan City, Gary Hammond, LaPorte. Uh, and I was sleeping on his couch at the time. We all worked at this car wash. We're like, <laughs> really, we just got to hire whoever we wanted, all our people and shit. We all just sold weed out of there and sold drugs out of there. And fucking, uh, we just had hours a day, you know, and it started. My dude would just be like, his name was Mike Wapo, and they'd be like, Wapude, and then like Pootie just stuck, man. And then like that ended up. Old Pootie. Pootie tank. Yeah, man. We used, to throw, we used to throw this big ass festival that started for his birthday, but it, it ended up being like a, a giant fucking festival in Northwest Indiana, man, in Michigan City. 
Oh, um, wow. And, like, okay. it ended up being, like, having, like, 10,000 people one year. We had, we had fucking Delta on there. We had Gift of Gab the last year, man. Fucking, like, rest in peace to Gift of Gab, man. Like, okay, shout out. Like, that's my dude. But. Definitely, definitely. And I got to ask you, though, like, what role do you want to play in the cannabis industry? Now, it's now booming now. So I what role wanna, do you want to play? I want to help people, man, like, fucking, you know what I mean? Especially people, black and brown people who've been convicted of bullshit like I was as a kid. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can get all that shit overturned now. Beyond that, you can become a fucking entrepreneur. Like, the shit we used to get arrested for, the shit that, you know what I mean? Like, everybody told me I was fucking up my life for. Right. Ended up being a good thing, man. And I'm able to help people with that. And I want to help other people like me who have been in similar situations like me. There you go, brother. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's yeah, the real shit. Yeah. For you. That's, that's the real shit. Brother. Fuck all these big companies coming in, you know, swooping in with all this money, man. man. I'm trying to help other people like me fucking get their shit expunged and be able to make something of their life positive and help people like all the real shit that's what weed is for man like that's what that shit should do is help people like ease pain you know get high have a good time you know what I mean that's what it's for but also like I was able to fucking you know I you know, I'm, I'm a multiple <laughs> convicted fella. Like, you know, I've mean, been through all that shit. And I was able to get a bunch of that shit turned around just by moving to Michigan and fucking, like, still doing the same shit I've been doing my whole life. But now it's looked at it in a different light. You know what I mean? Well, that's oh, what's up. That's what's up. That's what, I like the that's passion, man. You, you, you yeah. really feel that, don't you? No, man, it's real. It's real. You know, like I, like I said, but before before the interview when we was talking and shit, you know what I mean? Like, I, I grow weed for a living, and I make music because I love it, and I hope to fucking switch those, you know what I mean? Like, very right, strong. Like, make exactly. my money music, you know? Make my music <laughs> off money. Make my money off music, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> and fucking and grow weed because I love it, you know? Yeah. yeah Wait, the weed hit me a little bit. Though. Hey, 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 hey. They go together, though. Yeah, so yeah, they go real. together. They ain't never breaking up. <laughs> they yeah. Strong of the strong right there. All right, now. Which one is your favorite? Oh man, music. I mean, like you, you know, weed is wonderful. Are you, are you I, sure? I love it, but like, yeah, I'm sure, man. Like, <laughs> like the best music makes you high as fuck, you know. There it is. It hits me. It hits me hard, you know. When it does, like, it's, it's like being, you know, in an opium dream or some shit. When it's that good, you know. Let me ask you, like, now, are you, you were talking about like your reggae song, you know, the Natural Man? So, yeah. are you like a reggae fan like that? Was your reggae oh, fan yeah, before? Oh yeah, man. Bob Huge, Marley, man. all that. Bob Marley, man. Like, like when Nas and Damian Marley, when that shit came out, man, I, I must have seen them on tour like twenty times, like inadvertently. I'd be playing a festival and they'd be there, or or I'd be at a festival or some shit and they'd be there. But yeah, like. Man, Davey Marley's my shit. But yeah, I, I, I love Bob Marley, man. Like, uh, right now, I'm actually, I was going to put out my record Scatterbrain on my birthday last week, um, but I'm waiting on a, I, I potentially have a distribution deal with Six Degrees Records, who's a subsidiary of Island Records, which is, you know, Island Def Jam, but that's also right, who originally right. signed Bob Marley. That's great, then. Listen out. Listen out, everybody, about the distribution deal. You heard it again. Oh, Hoping. Yeah. Hoping, Hoping, man. Because we had Fatty on here, Mac 11, oh, yeah. everything. Distribution yeah, yeah. is the way to go. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. you know, that's a, that's the Big reason question. that Master P is still worth like $500 million to this day yes. is because he yes. just had the distribution deal, deal priority. He oh, kept yeah. all his fucking money. You know? Oh, yeah. That's the realest shit. That's oh, the yeah. goal right there. Get yeah. your they shit. Learn you from have them. multiple people say that. Own your fucking masters. Get your distribution for real. <laughs> it's yours any damn hey, way. If you don't get it nowhere else, you get it on the Hourglass Podcast. That's it's right. Tell you the real. That's right. The time is now. You see, we got the real here. You see, we got the motherfucking real here now. The real. The time is now. Ideal. Yeah, yeah. You know, ideal. I appreciate you. And um, definitely, I like. I mean, I seen on your page you got a couple of dogs though, man. So you got a couple of pits of them, man. I, I just got one, man. I'm trying yeah. to breed him, man. My dog Smokey Robinson, man. He's the best fucking dog. <laughs> oh, I swear, he's the best cool. dog I ever yeah. had in he my life. Like man. He blow like him. He sing like him. Nah, he, he, he actually he, he, he don't breed. smoke, man. Smoke don't smoke for real though. But, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm trying to breed him, man. He's the best dog I've ever had in my life. I just got his pedigree back. It's like a giant fucking poster. But it just with COVID, man. people wasn't wanting to do that. And then like the the next level up from just like trying to breed him to like. Fucking, you know, I'm just like, I'm not trying to be like a fucking dog breeder. I'm not, I'm not on like my big boy shit. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to like trying take to up a portion of my life. Trying, I, just, you, I want to get my to dude laid and get a puppy and shit. You exactly. Know? You're trying to breed him to sing hits. You know what I mean? Smokey Robinson. <laughs> big boy out here breeding owls and shit. You know, I'm not trying to do all this. Smoke A, smoke A. Yeah, dog got a first and last name. Shout out Smoke Dog. Smoke Dog. Shout, Shout out Smoke, smoke dog. dog. First and last name. Dog got a first and last name. Smokey That's Robinson. That's what's up. Smokey, man. Yeah, so what kind of pit is it? Oh, he's a blue pit, man. American Pit Bull Terry. Straight blue pit. He's like, he's got like a, a two-faced mask. He's like white, and blue, and he's the best dog ever. He's got a little Brenda in him, but he's great, man. He's honestly like fucking spoiled rotten. I'm going to take him with me everywhere I go. I would have taken him up here, but it was just hot as fuck, you know what I mean? <laughs> but normally, he'd be just, he'd like, I take him to the beach, and he just gets, you know what I mean? Just like, everybody's like, he's so handsome. <laughs> yeah, you're right. There you go. So, so, so how much time do you spend as far as the, the dispensary, like how much time do you have to, 
to, to put in that because I know the laws and everything like that. It's kind of like you got to be on it. Well, that shit right now is just man. We've been waiting for. We've had the the building and everything booked and ready to build. Right now we're waiting on like power and plumbing and that shit takes forever, man. AEP and shit. That shit takes forever. But uh, when it's actually running, you know, it's like it's a full time thing, man. And even right now, just as a caregiver, you know, it's like a. It's a professional fucking thing, but it's like I run it all myself. So it's like I'm about to go back after this shit. I'm going to wild out the club for a little bit, but I'm going to go nah. back after this shit. And I'm, I'm harvesting right now. You know, it's like right. uh, it's literally nonstop, man. If I'm not making music, I'm fucking growing weed and, and vice versa, straight up. There it is. Very, very little sleep, man. I usually sleep on like Tuesdays. <laughs> you sound like us. Yeah. Exactly. You sound like us. For real. Exactly. Right. exactly. Don't, get, wow. don't get time for nothing. Yeah, I, did. I, w- I was thinking about coming up there to help you with you. You ain't getting no sleep either. I'm not getting no sleep here. I mean, no I, I have I have a guest bedroom, but you know what I mean. Like nobody ever sleeps oh, wow. in that motherfucker. When my when my band's around, we ain't sleeping at all. You know, like for me, it's like all uh, partying. Yeah, uh-huh. man. Like yeah, it's it's nonstop, man. I, I, I'll sleep when I'm dead. You know. Wow. I ain't, I ain't got time for that shit right now. Yolo, <laughs> there you go. That's there it. it is. It is. So yeah. we gotta ask you though, like, now what's next for you? Oh uh, man, really just a. Uh, Scatterbrain releasing this record um, as soon as I find out about this distribution deal and if not I'm putting it out myself like it's already fucking copywritten through the Library of Congress and all that shit um, but I also got an album called Night Glow coming out with my band Midwest Hype okay. um, and we're both uh, I'm, we're both looking at signing distribution deals and uh, signing with a Hip Joint Creative okay. um, and I'll be on tour as fuck man like, you know what I mean like with the band by myself um, back and forth nonstop. like I really some bands don't like you know some bands make music and don't tour vice versa like me as a solo artist and the band we like believe in like making music and then fucking playing that shit live for so people. local yeah, tours coming up local tours coming uh, up local like, maybe national you know depends okay. like uh with COVID, everything's just, you know, it's, it hasn't been my focus because, like, right, right, we just right. been getting back to shit. During COVID, me and Midwest Type filmed, uh, we filmed the whole fucking hour-long video at Shuba's in Chicago. That was, like, a, a complete live show, like, we would normally play. And then um, we had my dude AJ do, like, <laughs> the crowd is all, like, mannequins and skeletons and Michael Jordan cutouts and shit. We made them all move and shit. <laughs> like, y'all check it out, man. It's called it's called Midwest Type Alive at Shuba's. Okay, okay. But, yeah, I so, but as soon as we get back to it, you know what I mean? Like, I, we want to tour hard, man. We, we were about the tour with Sublime and Dirty Heads real hard right before COVID so like that's that's our goal man like there's, if you make fucking rock and roll you need to play that shit for people man you know if you make hip hop you need to play it for people it's it's cool to be on SoundCloud or whatever but like you need to contact people you need to be, you know what I mean I need to right. dive in my shits for real that's some yeah. real that's shit that's some shit for real surfing right. nigga <laughs> ah, ah, <laughs> for real though <laughs> yeah, you, definitely, okay. you definitely sound like you're real in tune with everything yeah, man, I try to be, man. Uh, you know, I, I'm real happy to be able to do what I do. I'm real happy to be That's able to make up. money off of growing weed legally, and I'm real happy to be able to play music with my friends still and, and play it for people who love it, you know? So, like, That's what's up. hopefully I can continue to do those things for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. And you said that sounds good though. That, that, that's you. what you Thank did. You, that's what you did all your life. So now yeah, it's man. kind of reaping the benefits. Like, like I could still do this. And it, I yeah. got the tide of history turn. You know, if it wasn't for that, I'd still just be a criminal, fucking <laughs> rapping my ass off. You know what I mean? So like the tide of history has turned with me. So I feel real lucky and blessed. So I'm trying to, you know what I mean? That's what's up. Raise that bowl for all my people. That's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah. The ill is the dopest. Man, here it is. You know what I'm saying? I need to use words go like that. It, like, dope. It. Yeah, that's why yeah. you know it's real. <laughs> that's real, man. I appreciate <laughs> it, bro. That's what it is. Okay, definitely. Oh, man. Now, hey, man. Now, definitely, you got to give a, you know, tell them about your IG and stuff, like, where they can find you and everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, man. You can hit me at Ideal MWH. Ideal MWH, like Midwest Type. Also, at Midwest Type. Across everything. Across the board. All shit. It definitely be in the description. It will yeah, be yeah. in is, the description is. below. Got it, yes, man. sir. Got that it right is. There. Now, before we go, now, before we go, give us a little something. Okay. It's your man, Ideal. You know him well. The drawer I usually sell, so sit back up, blow a L, yo, I'm about to show and tell. In no house or home I dwell, I've been known as a troubadour. Take my soul out on the road, I bring the show to you and yours. Fresh as a humidor, rare as a unicorn, rappers as actors, they're just wearing the uniform. And what I lack in years, I'm making up for with experience. Not yet in my prime, no, barely even near it, and just yeah, yeah. my time slow, trying to experiment. And I'm gonna keep climbing until I'm riding on that chariot. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. There we go, baby, I did it. Well, baby. There it is. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Yeah, it is right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There it is. That's what's so hot. 
Hourglass. Yo, shout out to y'all. Appreciate y'all rocking with us, man. For real. That's what's up. And, and do one thing for us, man. Yeah, yeah. To say your name first, ideal, then say you rock with the number, number one podcast in Chicago, the Hourglass Podcast. The time is now. Yo, yo, the time is now, man. This is Ideal Peace Peace. I'm rocking with the Hourglass Podcast, the number one podcast in Chicago. Appreciate y'all having me, man, for real. He said it here, man. Here it is, go, right there. Much love, the man. Much love. Time is now. now. That's right, baby. There it go. There it go. Yeah. Uh, yeah damn it. Happy <laughs> birthday. Happy birthday, birthday to Radio. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Happy birthday, birthday man. You know what I'm saying? Happy birthday to now. Ideal. I I yeah. Yeah. I you know what I'm saying? The Kansas in the house. We got the Kansas in the house, baby. Kansas. June 22nd. June 22nd, right there. We all Kansas. All Kansas. There you go. Yes, you do got some good ones. Let's get it. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. You got to come back. You got to come back. And bring your girl on here. Yeah, no, 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 my girl's coming the, for sure, yeah, man. We coming to the farm. Side. We coming to the farm next time. Yeah, yeah, we'll do no. farm. No, man, we, we finna do uh, next year, I think, in the summer, man. We're going to do uh, another iteration of that festival I was telling y'all about. It's going to be Buchanan. We're trying to get, like, Snoop up in that bitch. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You got to let us in, Outdoor though. weed festival, man. Oh, yeah. You got to let us in, You got to invite us. You got to invite us. I got you, man. I hear y'all knocking. I'm going to let you in. Definitely, definitely. Let us in. And we got our shout-outs over here, too. GTB Medical Services, Medical Curious Services, Medical Equipment Repair. Check us out. It will be in the description right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The Class Simmons Barbershop, 103rd in Carpenter, Chicago. Get there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got the London Dramore drip for you. You know what I'm saying? Coming soon. We putting together a package, so just look out for it. You know, and, uh, and last but not least. You got it right here. You got yes, this sir. mystery coming out oh, here yeah. right now, man. The name over right there. There we go, ideal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. I got Scatterbrain coming out. I got Night Glow coming out, man. I appreciate y'all having me. Hourglass, yo. The time is motherfucking now. Yeah, yeah, go yeah, the yeah, time. Yeah. Is now you heard it. I'm below your host. Rated out a birthday man. A birthday man. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 You know it, give it up for Rated R. Yes, you know. sir. And I'm Dub Boo in the house, hey. man. And we Dub uh, Boo in the house. The time Who got the first shot? Nice. I got you, bro. I Who got, got the first shot? I got you. Thank you for listening to the Hourglass Podcast. The time is now. Shoot us an email at info at hourglasspodcasting.com to submit questions and to become a future guest. It's our time. Now, let's make the best of it. Peace.